take off, take flight with you. Yeah, we never fly, but we're flying. Hi, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Take Flight Podcast. This is episode 111, and this is part of our solo takeaway episodes. Our takeaway episodes are five to 10 minutes episodes where one of the hosts of Take Flight Podcast takes you through a topic that's close to them. This week's episode will be hosted by myself, Olu Okanola. As we get into the end of the year, this is a perfect time to start setting goals for 2022. In this week's episode, I'm going to go through my process when it comes to setting goals, mainly focus on financial goals and how I've been able to obtain them. Why should you listen to me, right? I've been setting goals and budgets for multiple years over for a multi-billion dollar company. And the last year, I set a goal to start a six-figure business and add an additional property, um, investment property to my portfolio. And these were goals that I was able to achieve. But like I always say, remember, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a random guy talking about goal setting. So if you like any of the information that I give, please seek independent financial advice. But let's get started. When setting financial goals, I try to start with the past and my current position. And when I mention this, I try to focus on two key areas, income and expenses, and also net worth. So let's break down these two areas, net worth. What does that actually mean? Net worth is just a calculation where you look at the value of all your assets. So that could be property, stocks, pensions, minus your total liabilities. So credit cards, mortgages, student loans. Now the net of that, ideally you want it to be positive and you want it to grow. So you want your assets to be greater than your liability. So this is something I track on a monthly basis because I'm trying to build my net worth. I'm trying to acquire more assets. Now, when I look at my net worth, what I'm focused on is the growth and the performance of the different assets that I have. So I look at the properties I have. How is that growing year over year? I look at the stocks that I have and own. How is that growing year over year? So for example, if I look at my pension, if I contribute a certain amount to my pension, I automatically get 200% um, returns. Now, what I mean about this is my company has a matching scheme. So for example, if I invest 1K into my pension, my employer will add 2K into that uh, pension pot. So again, that's guaranteed money for my employer, and that's a great return. If I compare that to sort of the stock market, some of the properties I own, the capital appreciation there might have only been 5%. So when I'm looking at my net worth, I'm really focusing on the growth. How are my different assets performing? The next area that I focus on is my income and expenses. So my income will be salary, might be dividends that you receive from stocks, could be property rent um, from an investment property. And then I look at my expenses, such as it could be restaurants, it could be mortgage payments, um, it could be rest delivery, uh, fast food, it could be shopping, lots of different expenses that you spend during the year. Now, my aim when I'm looking at my income and expenses is to utilize all my income. Now, the key word there is utilize. I didn't say spend. So I'm not talking about just living a lavish life, just going to Dubai one week, going to um, Brazil the next. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Utilizing is making sure every penny that you're earning has some sort of function. So that could be through investment. So it could go towards an investment. It could go towards savings. It could go towards your living expenses. So eating, um, shopping, etc. Now, the reason why I do this is because I think about money 
as a tool. Money should be utilized and it shouldn't just be held with one person because there's no growth there. So if I just keep it in my bank account, there's no growth there. So by utilizing, I'm either spending it for my living expense, um, somewhere to live, somewhere like eating or experiences, or I'm trying to invest that money or save for a rainy day. Now, I'm really focused on how do I reduce my expenses and increase my investments. So that is really where I'm focused at. Now, after I've looked at my income and net worth, I start to set goals for 2022. Now, when I split my goals, I split them into four key areas. Health, because that is one of the most important elements. If you're not healthy, it's difficult to achieve most of your goals. Um, relationships, so that could be family, friends, or a significant uh, partner. Then you've got happiness, right? We're all doing this to increase our happiness. So as I'm going through the year, I'm trying to ensure that I'm continually, continuously staying happy and joyful. And then lastly, um, in not in any particular order, but finance. And finance is the one that we're really focusing on on this episode. So now when I'm setting my goals, my financial goals, I try to make sure that they're smart goals. So smart financial goals. That means they're specific, they're measurable. So there's some number around there. Achievable, relevant, and there's some sort of time period on there. So it's either going to be six months or a year. So let's go into an example, a tangible example for you. So I looked at my um, my net worth and I realized that a good area that I'm getting a high return on is my pension. So I set a goal for 2022 that I am going to contribute 1K to my pension. My employer will contribute 2K, um, which is a 200% return. And I will make sure that I contribute the maximum amount that my employer will match for 12 months. Also, I automate this process so I don't have to think about it. I don't forget about it. So it comes directly out of my salary. So that is a smart financial goal. It's specific, measurable, there's a number, achievable, relevant, and also there's a time period, 12 months. The next goal um, that I set was to reduce my expenses. By looking at my income and expenses, I noticed that I spent a high amount on eating out, um, roughly around three to 4K a year eating out. So what I decided to do was set a target of saying each month I will spend a maximum of 150 pounds on takeout food for the 12 months. Again, specific, measurable, measurable, achievable, relevant, and there's some sort of time bound period where that's associated to. So those are two examples of some financial goals that I set. Now, the last thing, and I would say probably very... I wouldn't say the most important, but a very important element is understanding the frequency in which you're going to track your goals. So for me, I track my goals on a monthly basis. So on a monthly basis, I'll pull my bank statement and see how have I done against my goals? Am I trending in the right direction? Did I spend too much on takeout foods, for example? Did I contribute the maximum amount that I said to my pension? Did I save enough for my property pot? By me tracking it on a monthly basis, I'm able to correct any overspending or underspending, right? I'm able to rectify the goals. I'm able to change the goals to make them more achievable. So I hope this episode has been really important for you. Um, but I'm just going to really summarize what we discussed in this episode and the important areas when setting financial goals. The first thing is to start by understanding your current position. Understand your net worth and understand your income and expenses for the last 12 months. The next 
thing that I focus on is understanding the performance of your assets. As you're investing and spending, you want to know what works for you. Is this investing in your pension work for you? Does investing in the stock market work for you? Does investing in uh, property, crypto work for you, right? I believe you should have a level of diversity, uh, diversification, but it is important to understand where are your great and good returns and which areas are you losing money that you might potentially want to sell um, and purchase a different asset. The, the next point is utilize all your money. Again, keyword is utilize, not spend. So money is a tool and it should be utilized. So understand from all your income, how much are you going to allocate to investment? How much are you going to allocate to um, savings? How much are you going to allocate to spending your lifestyle? And you don't want to get the lifestyle creep. So as you earn more money, you're spending more. Ideally, you don't want to do that, but you want to understand how is your money being utilized? Then the next thing is setting smart goals. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So like a time period. So setting smart goals. And lastly is tracking your goals and your performance on a frequent basis. I recommend monthly, maybe quarterly works for you, but it is important to track how you're doing so that you get to you can focus on the important goals and make sure you're tracking your performance. So I hope this episode was useful. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find out more information, you can find it on Instagram under Take Flight Podcast, or you can follow my journey on Olu, so that's O-L-U, underscore Okunola, so that's O-K-U-N-O-L-A, on Instagram. If you haven't yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe, um, and we will see you next episode. Take care and take flight. Take off, take flight with you.